Greetings everyone, it's Professor Fiori, and today we're going to talk about a very interesting circuit. It's an adjustable inverter, non-inverter. Check out these features. How much would you be willing to pay? Voltage gain adjustable down to zero, in phase or inverted, control with a single knob adjustment. Well, that sounds really interesting. You can have a maximum gain greater than unity. Well, that sounds even better. And it uses only one op amp and a handful of other components. Well, this sounds pretty good. Would you be willing to pay $20? Uh, I don't think so. $30? I still don't think so. $50? You're going in the wrong direction. How about if I said it's free knowledge just by watching this video. Well, that sounds more like what I signed up for. Let's take a look. Pretty spiffy little circuit. One op amp, couple of resistors, and a potentiometer. How does this work? Well, the first thing I want to point out here is the fact that you have two inputs, basically. You can think of this as having an inverting path and a non-inverting path where this is controlled right by a, a potentiometer which is basically setting up a voltage divider now i can't control the pot in real time here but i am going to go in and change to different values so we can see what the heck is going on all right so initially notice this little o right here and Tina, that tells us where the wiper arm would be, in other words, way down here, if I set it to 0%. So here's my setting percentage, 0%. So that's where it is right now. The wiper arm's way down here. All right? Okay. So immediately, I just want to show you what this is going to do, and then we can dive into the theory behind it. So do a little transient analysis. And. All right, so our input voltage, our generator voltage is in green. We can see that's a one volt, one kilohertz signal. And the load voltage in maroon out here, and we can see that's perfectly inverted. Perfectly inverted. Same amplitude, unity gain. All right, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to crank the potentiometer up to 100%. In other words, so that the wiper arm is all the way up here. All right, let's see what we get. Hey, look at that. It looks like there's only one waveform, but if you look closely, you realize there are two waveforms that are overlaid on top of each other. And just to prove the point, I'm going to zoom in to the very top of this. And you can see, yes, in fact, there are two waveforms that are extraordinarily close, right? Notice the scale, 900 millivolts, 1 millivolt. All right, so looking pretty good. Now let's go right into the middle, 50% setting. <clears throat> one more time this should wind up right in the middle of those two things which would be what it would give us zero and you can see in fact it does right there's our generator one volt and the output is the load voltage is nothing so we can start the pot up at one extreme right if i start up here at the top we end up with Whatever we put in, exact same phase, same amplitude. And then as I dial the pot down, that output signal is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until we hit zero. And then as we continue on down towards zero, we get a larger and larger inverted signal, right? So that's kind of cool. We start up here and it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We get to zero and then it starts growing in the sort of negative, negative dimension, if you will. All right. Okay. How does this work? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is the gain on this, the basic gain, the maximum gain, is set, as you might guess, by RF and RI. So I've got RF over RI. That's 10K over 10K or 1. That's going to give us the maximum gain. Now, what happens with the potentiometer? So let's take a look at those three cases. And then you can kind of sort of judge, if you will, what happens in between them once we have the extremes. So when the wiper arm is all the way down here, right? The plus input is basically going to ground. And what you have really is just an inverting amplifier with a gain of one in this case. You know, granted, there's another 10K pot out here that's setting uh, 
helping to set, I should say, the input impedance. But as far as the operation of the circuit itself, it's just an inverting amplifier with gain of 1. Okay, now what happens when you go all the way up? Wiper arms up here. So you just imagine I've got um, this point connected directly to the non-inverting input, right? And I've got this 10K pot just sitting out here, all right? So what does that mean? Well, it means that VGen, the input signal, is applied directly to the non-inverting input. So if this is one volt, then I've got one volt over here on pin three of this op amp. Now here's a very, 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 very important point. It's an important point. Very. This pin two, which we would normally assume in an inverting amplifier would be a virtual ground, this is no longer a virtual ground because we have other signal coming in. We're not using just one input. We're using both inputs. So we can't just automatically assume that this is at a virtual ground. In fact, remember the two things we use to analyze these sorts of circuits, the two facts we use for the op amps are number one, the input currents into the op amp itself are ideally zero. And number two, the differential input voltage, the error voltage, in other words, the voltage right here between pins two and three, is also ideally zero. So we've just said with the wiper arm all the way up here, then VGen is right on pin three, which means that same potential, in other words, roughly one volt, should be sitting on pin two. Well, now think about the current that's flowing through R1, excuse me, RI. I've got one volt on this side. I've got basically a volt on that side. In other words, the differential voltage across RI is virtually zero, which means the current through it is virtually zero. So if there's hardly any current here, and we know this current is approximately zero, then how much current must be flowing through RF? Zero, right? I mean, anything else would violate Kirchhoff's current law. So if there's no current flowing through RF, then the voltage drop across it must also be zero. Now remember, we can go from any point to any other point, take any path we want, and we have to come up with the same voltage. So V load, which we would naturally go across the load resistor to ground, we could also get that by taking this route, right? I could go from V load out this way. What is the drop across the RF? The drop across the RF we just said is zero. So whatever this potential is on pin two, that's the same potential we see over here on the output. Well, we just said that was tied to the generator voltage of one volt. So bingo, there's our one volt, in this case, non-inverted, right? So in the initial case, wipe around all the way down, we just have an inverting amplifier with a gain of one. In this case, with the wiper arm all the way up, we have a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of one. Now what happens in the middle? So let's say 50%, right? Got the pot right here. What's going on? Well, we get half the signal, right? It's a one-to-one -one divider. So this one volt, we get half a volt on the upper piece, half a volt on the lower piece. So that means there's half a volt sitting on pin three, the non-inverting input of the op amp. Again, the error voltage should be zero. So pin two should also be sitting there, half a volt. What's the current through RI? Well, we're going from one volt to half a volt. So the current's flowing in this direction, right? Left to right, half a volt. That's gonna produce some current. Now that is the current, because the input current into the op amp is negligible, that is the current that will continue and flow through RF in this same direction. So we've got plus to minus across RI and plus to minus across RF, which means since these two resistors are the same size, same current, this voltage must be the same as this voltage. All right, so right now we've got, just to recap, half a volt sitting at node two of the op amp, right, pin two of the op amp, plus to minus, pin two to ground, it's half a volt, and I've got this half a volt plus to minus left to right on RI, which also produces plus to minus half a volt on RF. Same trick, let's go from V load to ground. I go back this way, what do I get? Minus to plus half a volt, and then here we are, at pin two at plus one half volt. So I've got basically a negative half a volt minus the plus, and then a positive one volt at pin two. Well, those two things cancel, and our output is zero. Yay! That's exactly what we saw, okay? 
And you can guess if we go somewhere in the middle, you know, this voltage will change. You know, if I put it up at like, I don't know, let's say three quarters, we're going to get three quarters of a volt over here, three quarters of a volt here. We're going to have that three quarters across RI that establishes a current, produces a voltage over here. Again, you can go through and try this on any number of, of iterations, right, with different values. You'll see exactly how this all works. But we've got the two endpoints and we've got the middle point. So I think that's pretty good. Now, one of the things I mentioned up front was you can have a gain of more than one. So this thing just has a gain of one. But if you want to have this thing go, let's say, from a gain of five down through an inverting gain of five, you can do that. And it only requires a modest modification. Now, you might think, hey, all I have to do is change RF. In fact, that really won't quite work. It kind of sort of a little bit works, but not completely. What will end up happening is you'll get an asymmetrical gain. One side of it will have the larger gain, but the other side won't. And the reason for that is because the gains for the inverting and the non-inverting are off by one. In other words, it's RF over RI for an inverting path, but it's RF over RI plus one for the non-inverting path. So on one side, you only get a gain of one, and on the other side, you get this other boosted gain. We have to compensate for that imbalance by essentially having another path for current. And I'm going to do that in the last circuit over here. All we really have to do is add this third resistor, R3, and this will set up our gain of RF over RI as expected. So in this case, this will produce a gain of 30K over 10K or three. So we should be able to go from plus three to minus three, right? Not inverting to inverting. And we just set up R3 so that when R3 is in parallel with RF, this will give you the value of RI. So 30K in parallel with 15K will give us 10K. And this will give us the symmetrical sort of gain that we want. Now, the proof of this is a little long to put on a video, but you can find it in the associated op amps textbook, right? So my op amps textbook, if you haven't already discovered this, free textbook, it's a 600 page textbook. You can just download on my websites, dissidents.com, jimfiori.org, my mvcc.edu website, get that in PDF or ODT. Or if you want, you can get print versions of this very inexpensively um, on Amazon. If you're into it, you can also get a Kindle. I think the print is around $15 US and the Kindle is, um, I think somewhere around four, I forget exactly. Um, but you can always get it for free, right? You can just download the PDF or the ODT and off you go. And the proof of this, the, the exact value of R3 that you need is found in there, all right? So I'll put the, uh, the URLs and whatnot, the details in the description of the video. So just check there, all right? And remember, all of my books for all of these videos are all free. You can get them in PDF and ODT formats. So let's do a quick transient analysis over here and see what we get. Oh, before I do that, I almost forgot. I don't remember where I set this pot. Okay, so the pot here is set at zero. So pot, uh, wiper arm is way down here. Boom. All right, so there's our inverting uh, signal as we would have expected. And let's get our legend over here. So the uh, green is the generator input and the load is the maroonish color. So we can see there's our one in and we get basically three volts out, inverted, right? Beautiful, okay. So let's continue this. I'm gonna take uh, the pot and crank this up to 100%. So this should give us the invert, the, excuse me, the non-inverting gain, since this is the inverting gain, this should give us the non-inverting gain Same gain of three. And bingo, there you go. Okay, again, there's your VGen and the maroon is the VLOAD. Finally, let's go in with um, the 50% and that should give us zero. All right. And sure enough, big, big surprise, our VLOAD is zero. Okay. 
And maybe not, maybe that wasn't finally, right? Let's just let's just throw a random value in here, like 65%. Let's see what we get. What do you think we're gonna get? All right, it's gonna be closer to when the wiper arm was up here, right? 65% is up here somewhere. And there you go. Okay, so our load is slightly less, right? Um, you know, we're only up at 65. So, you know, if we push it up to 70, 75, 80, that thing is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? We're going to get over a volt, two volts, and eventually when we crank it all the way up to 100%, we get the three volts that we saw before. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so I think we have pretty much covered this. This is the general case. And you, if you think about this for a sec, right, to go to a gain of one, RF and RI are the same size. So when you look at this equation, the only way you can get this to be true, in other words, the only R3 that would work such that RF in parallel with it would give you RI, right, if this is 10K and this is 10K, you realize that R3 has to be infinity. And in fact, in our um, first unity gain version, that's the only difference is R3 is left off. That's infinity, right? So you can kind of think of this version, the single, uh, the unity gain version uh, as, as being sort of a special case, all right? But if you do need a gain of just one, then you may, all right, get rid of R3, right? But this is your general case, okay? All righty, beautiful. We'll see you next time. Take care.